jellyfish are taking over, and it's not just a beach problem. Remember that frog army a TikTok user tried to raise. Turns out, nature already had something far creepier in store. No app required. Meet the common jellyfish. Looks harmless, right? Think again. These guys swarm in massive numbers when the water temperature is just right. The current's cooperative, and the plankton buffet is wide open. Suddenly, hundreds of thousands of jellyfish pop up. Yes, at the same time, in what looks like a bad CGI movie. Only it's real life. And we're not talking a few dozen blobs. Some swarms stretch across hundreds of square miles. Now sure, it's beautiful in a nature is amazing kind of way, but it's also a logistical and ecological nightmare. First off, tourism. You like the beach. You might not after wading into a sting party. Second, fishing. These jellyfish clog nets, gobble up fish eggs and larvae, and generally make life miserable for people just trying to make a living. One swarm even wiped out a salmon farm in Northern Ireland back in 2007. Poof, millions in losses, gone. And it doesn't stop there. Jellyfish have been jamming up machinery in nuclear plants and even knocking out power grids. Not kidding. The first recorded jellyfish-induced blackout. Australia, 1937. The worst. The Philippines, 1999. To 40 million people left in the dark. In Sweden, jellyfish blocked a nuclear reactor's intake pipe in both 2005 and 2013. That reactor was supplying 10% of the country's electricity. Fast forward to 2022. Off the coast of Israel, a swarm so thick it stretched hundreds of feet below the surface, nearly clogged a desalination plant. You know, the thing that provides drinking water to millions. So yeah, not ideal. So, why is this happening? Short answer, us. Long answer, climate change, overfishing jellyfish predators, ocean pollution, and hey, let's not forget the Suez Canal which opened the gates for species to invade ecosystems they were never meant to touch. Fishermen in Japan are dragging up nets full of jellyfish instead of fish. Useless catch. Alaska's getting hit too, especially when the salmon starts spawning and the water turns into a buffet of fish eggs. Jellyfish don't even have to work for it. They just float and feast. In the late 2000s, scientists seriously warned that jellyfish might take over the oceans. And honestly, it's not looking like they were wrong. So what's stopping the jellypocalypse? One word. Turtles. Specifically, leatherback sea turtles. These beasts chow down on jellyfish like it's an all-you-can-eat buffet. Up to 16,000 calories a day. That's the kind of hero we don't deserve but desperately need. So next time you see a sea turtle, thank it for keeping our oceans from turning into a gelatinous nightmare. And hey, if you made it this far, go ahead and hit that like button. It's only fair. Oh, and just when you thought it couldn't get any more intense, let's talk sharks. Drone footage recently captured around 10,000 blacktip sharks cruising just offshore in Palm Beach, Florida. And no, this wasn't CGI. It was peak migration season. These sharks head up to Georgia and the Carolinas to give birth in the spring, then boomerang back to Florida once the summer heat fades. While experts assure us these sharks aren't interested in humans, Walking out onto a beach and seeing the ocean boil with fins. Yeah, climate cycles aren't exactly the first thing that comes to mind. So between bats blacking out the sky, frogs flooding farm tanks, and sharks filling the shoreline, it kind of feels like nature's throwing a surprise party and forgot to invite us. Hit that like button if you're glad none of these showed up in your backyard. Yet. When nature mobs up, sharks, birds, and a rodent plot twist. So, picture this. Florida beaches closed, lifeguards waving people away, and swimmers glaring at the shoreline in disbelief. Why? Sharks. 
A whole lot of them. Turns out, during migration season, black-tip sharks swarm the shallow waters off the Florida coast, thousands of them, all in the mood to mingle and mate. Now, I did say you didn't need to panic, but here's the catch. Every so often, a black-tip shark does bite someone. Usually not fatal, usually just a curious young shark checking out what that flailing thing in the water is. Still, probably not the best time for a beach day. But it's not just black tips forming these aquatic flash mobs. Enter the scalloped hammerhead. These oddly shaped predators gather by the hundreds near Darwin's Arch in the Galapagos. Unlike most sharks, hammerheads are super social and also super mysterious. Scientists aren't even sure why they cluster like that. Some think they're resting. Others suspect they're picking up mysterious signals from the seafloor. Personally, I think they're having a private shark convention. For over a decade, large groups of female hammerheads have migrated to two remote atolls in French Polynesia every summer. Why? No one knows. But it's starting to look like sharks have their own summer traditions we'll never be invited to. Millions of bats, frogs, and sharks. Nature's version of a jump scare. Let's start with something straight out of a Halloween special, the straw-colored fruit bat. This flying mammal lives and breeds across Africa, with mating season kicking off around April and babies popping out by February or March. Well, usually. Sometimes, females hit pause on pregnancy and somehow sync up their deliveries in October. Why? No one knows. But here's where it gets wild. Every October, these bats descend on Kasanka National Park in Zambia, like clockwork. By November, the skies turn black with their wings, millions of them. And just as suddenly, by January, poof, they're gone. Scientists tried counting them, but good luck with that. Bats are fast, small, and there are way too many. Visual estimates ranged from 1 to 10 million, which is basically science speak for we gave up. So they turned to AI. With help from motion-triggered cameras and 45 hours of footage, a machine learning model did, in 50 hours, what would have taken a human 13 years and a likely mental breakdown. Final tally, 9,871,014 bats. That's not a swarm, it's a bat apocalypse. But bats aren't the only ones flexing their crowd size. In southern China, people stumbled into a scene that looked like the floor of a horror movie set. Frogs everywhere. But no, this wasn't the start of a biblical plague. Turns out, these frogs came from nearby frog farms. Yup, frog farms. Some provinces have up to 1,000 of them, housing a collective 70 million frogs. Roughly the population of the entire UK, but with more jumping and less tea. These frogs are bred for food, especially a dish popular in China, Malaysia, and Thailand. In places like the US, frog farming is also a thing. Yep, really. Female bullfrogs lay around 20,000 eggs each, and with a male-to-female ratio of one to one, let's just say they're very productive. It takes about two to three years for a frog to reach market size, and that frog flood you saw, that's just shipment day. Now let's move from fish to feathers. On the Falkland Islands, things are equally crowded. 
these remote islands host 70% of the world's black-browed albatrosses. That's about half a million breeding pairs. They arrive every September, nest, raise a single chick, and vanish by late April. Their nests are sturdy towers of mud and poop. Yes, guano, reused year after year like high-rise condos. The chicks don't return for seven to 10 years. Why the delay? Well, albatrosses live up to 50 years, so they're in no rush. The biggest colony is on Steeple Jason Island. In 1987, aerial photos revealed nearly 200,000 nests, with most occupied, and the population still thriving. But not all albatrosses are so lucky. Over on Midway Atoll, the birds started showing up with bloody gashes, injuries that puzzled volunteers at first. The culprit? Mice. Yes, the same cute little guys introduced during World War II. For decades, they left the birds alone. Then something changed. They started gnawing through the skin, muscle, and fat of nesting birds, especially under the wings and on their backs. Albatrosses are stubborn nesters. They sit tight even when being eaten alive, which is as tragic as it is bizarre. And since these nesting grounds are critical for the survival of the species, any disruption could be catastrophic. So yeah, sometimes nature throws a shark parade, Sometimes it's a majestic bird boom, and sometimes it's mice deciding to turn villain. The animal kingdom is full of surprises. Let's just hope the next plot twist doesn't involve flying jellyfish or something. Bird plagues and turtle comebacks, the wild wins and fails of conservation. Just when you thought things couldn't get worse for wildlife, bam. A bizarre disease showed up on the Falkland Islands targeting albatross chicks. The symptoms? Swollen beaks, eye discharge, and limp heads. Once infected, the chicks had maybe 48 hours. Scientists still don't know what's causing it. But with hundreds of thousands of birds packed into one spot, well, it's like a petri dish with wings. And yeah, the spread's been fast. But hey, let's not spiral into despair. There's actually good news too. Off the coast of northeastern Australia, Rain Island is officially the world's largest green turtle nesting site. Around 64,000 turtles were spotted migrating there, and sometimes that number jumps to 100,000 females ready to lay eggs on the reef. It's a huge win for conservation, especially since these turtles were once endangered in the region. As of January then 2022, 640,000 hatchlings were counted. Sure, not all will survive. Being a baby turtle is basically signing up for a gauntlet, but it's still progress. Oddly enough, people helped make this happen. Rain Island used to be too small for the turtle crowds, so humans engineered it. They moved over 1.4 million cubic feet of sand, reshaped 1.2 million cubic feet of beach, and installed 5,700 feet of turtle-proof fencing to keep them from accidentally cliff diving. Yep, humans broke a lot of ecosystems, but sometimes, just sometimes, we fix them too. If the turtles could talk, they'd probably say thanks, or at least not bite us. Don't forget to leave a like if you're rooting for the turtles. See you next time.